I'm Dr. Siyavash Harani, MD, and I practice dermatoenterology, infectious disease, and NHPD. I was asked to give a talk about the coronavirus, and I'm going to give you a practical and a clinical approach if you have an epidemic in the United States. Coronavirus, as you know, belongs to animal. It belongs to cat, camel, bat, and the cow. It's not me. The infection has been out there. Indeed, in 2002, we had an outbreak in Guangdong, China. Infected 8,000 people and killed 800 people. We call it SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The second wave came 10 years after that pop-up in Saudi Arabia. We call it MERS this time, a Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. It infected 2,494 people and killed 900 people. So it has a higher mortality rate in second wave in Saudi Arabia. The current infection, we have an American patient that we check the genetic information and the RNA of the virus of the coronavirus, it matched the one to a Wuhan area in China. So the, when the genetic information is similar, if you think this is the same virus came from the China. They interviewed the group of the people who originally got infected in Wuhan, China, and the majority of them have gone to the local animal market and purchased animal. And that's why we think it came from animal and came from the bat to infect the human. But not every virus can infect the human. So it's not common to virus can infect the human from animal and from human to the human. For example, rabies can infect the human, but usually, usually doesn't infect the, another human from the human. But that's different from coronavirus. Coronavirus has adaptability. It adapts. The major component of the virus is membrane, uh, enveloped, protein E, and protein S, which is the spike on the top of the virus. Those protein S are responsible to attach the host to the human cells. They work like a lock and key. Once they get attached, this glycoprotein, which is the protein mixed with the sugar, the replication of the virus right away starts from that point on. And that's where the infection comes from. But we have to understand that the coronavirus doesn't really kill the person. What it does, the complication of the virus, which is the SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, means the infection, a severe infection of the lung. The airway get obstructed, the fluid get filled inside the lung, inflammatory fluid, and impair the oxygen saturation and oxygen exchange in the lung, and that's ultimately take the person's life. The infection of the coronavirus is in the air, is an air droplet, I mean air droplet exposure, uh, respiratory uh, droplets. Um, we know that we have to wash our hand and uh, objects, but not many records of by touching the objects, touching our mouth and nose and eyes really cause the infection. It can, but the mainly is respiratory droplets, it means we're getting distance from the people who are coughing and sneezing two meters away. I'm going to go over the symptoms. I'm going to go over the, uh, those symptoms that are really mainly more exclusive to the coronavirus compared to others. I'm not going to confuse you. For example, there are many symptoms such as nasal congestions, uh, sneezing, uh, myalgia, body ache, fever, all of those things are common between the cold, uh, flu, uh, and um, uh, unusual allergy reactions. But one thing is more exclusive to the coronavirus is a dyspnea. And dyspnea means shortness of the breath. And the shortness of the breath is the one but you have to look into it. If we are not really get short of breath if we get the flu, we are not really short of breath if we get the cold. But for coronavirus, it's going, if it's going to get complication, we're going to get short of breath, and that's the one we have to be very careful. The good news is for the children, you, they hasn't shown that they develop SARS or uh, respiratory syndrome. It means the children get uh, stomach flu, uh, nausea, vomiting, they get nasal congestion and sneezing, but they don't really get pneumonia. And that's a good thing that we, uh, we are lucky on that aspect. For the adult, um, we look for the high fever, and the high fever, we're talking about the 39, 38.5, 39, 39.5, and 101, 102 Fahrenheit. And we look for the shortness of breath again. So now, some preventive measurement we can do is um, to buy a mask, it could be N95 mask. N95 mask, and I prefer a charcoal activated type of the mask that we have. Uh, there also another thing is called pulse oximeter. The pulse oximeter measures the oxygen in the blood uh, through the just uh, by, uh, through the skin. Um, this was available only for hospitals and the doctors 20 years ago, but this is now available to public, and you can buy it in eBay and Amazon. It's not expensive. 
this would be a good indication if you have a beginning of the infection, if you have oxygen saturation or oxygen exchange is impaired and you really need to seek critical uh, medical uh, help at that time. But uh, none of this will replace the consulting experienced medical doctor. So if you get um, any issue, any symptoms, you need to speak to your doctor. Thank you.